people first became aware of the existence of viruses by experiencing the diseases that they cause. This fact inevitably led to certain preconceptions regarding viruses. For example, in Latin, the word virus means poison. The theory that many diseases of humans, animals and plants were caused by transmissible infectious agents was first put forward by Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur in the 1880s. By the end of the 19th century, bacteria were recognised. And the property of bacteria was that they could be removed from the flasks or the culture media in which they were being cultured, grown. They could be removed with filters. And the filters removed them simply because the pore size in the filter was smaller than the size of the bacteria. So you could steril effectively sterilise um, the, the culture medium, remove the bacteria by passing it through a filter. However, the surprise was that the fluid that came out, which no longer had bacteria in it, could still cause infections, could still cause disease. At first it was thought this was a toxin or a poison of some sort, but it was quickly realised that it could be transmitted between hosts and cause transmissible disease. And this was the discovery of viruses and, of course, the beginning of virology. Many of these early discovered viruses, such as measles, rubella, or yellow fever virus, were named after the disease they caused. Others were named according to the place where they were first isolated, like, for example, West Nile virus. Clearly, this was a rather arbitrary system of identifying viruses. In the early days of virology, little could be done to investigate the physical nature of these extremely small infectious entities, which could give rise to disease. It was the invention and development of electron microscopy that initially brought a much clearer idea about the structure of viruses and its diversity. it became clear that viruses vary a great deal in size and shape. Some viruses are even larger than small bacteria. Generally, they range from about 20 nanometers to over 500 nanometers. Structurally, viruses are genomic material surrounded by a capsid. In many cases, the capsid is covered by a lipid membrane and in many viruses, spike proteins protrude from the membrane. The capsid structure can be icosahedral or helical. Other developments, such as the laboratory culture of host cells, which permitted virus propagation in vitro, have facilitated the analysis of the protein and nucleic acid composition of virus particles. The rise of molecular biology has allowed us to study in greater and greater detail the way in which the genes and proteins of the virus particle function. We are able to study how they interact with living processes inside the host cell and in infected organisms. DNA sequencing of virus genomes has revolutionized our picture of the genetics of viruses and the relationships between different viruses. An understanding of virus structure at the molecular and atomic level has come from the use of X-ray diffraction to study the crystal structure of viruses and their components. The accumulating data on the molecular biology of virus replication led to a classification scheme proposed by David Baltimore. This scheme places viruses into seven groups according to their type of genome and, importantly, according to the way they synthesize viral messenger RNA. Single-stranded virus genomes may be of negative polarity, complementary in sequence to messenger RNA. Or a single-stranded genome may be of positive polarity, that is the same polarity as messenger RNA, and thus directly encode the amino acid sequence of a protein. The Baltimore scheme thus encapsulates fundamental features of viral replication processes. Today we know that viruses can infect every kind of living cell, from mammals to insects,
plants to algae, bacteria to archaea, and fungi. They occupy a unique position in biology in that they possess some of the essential biochemical features of living organisms without actually being alive. Thus, it is not correct to refer to them as microorganisms. As particles in the environment, virions are complex but inert objects. They are only capable of reproduction when they can enter and infect living cells. They effectively hijack these living cells and force them to act as hosts in which to reproduce themselves. Taxonomy of viruses is, is a very complex subject for the simple reason that viruses can't be classified in the same way that higher cellular organisms were classified. For years, virologists argued about the ways in which they should classify the viruses. And the International Committee for the Taxonomy of Viruses, ICTV, was formed to try to come up with a rational, structured way of classifying viruses. Modern virus classification, or taxonomy, is a rational and robust process. It's based mainly on the morphology of the virion, the physical and chemical characterization of its protein and nucleic acid components, its mode of replication, and on the nucleic acid sequences which form its genome. These are all characteristics of the virus itself, rather than properties which emerge upon infection, such as host range or disease. Today, the ICTV recognizes 73 virus families and 24 genera that are not yet assigned to families. Once arranged into the categories of order, family, subfamily, genus and species, diagnosing virus diseases and studying virus epidemiology becomes easier. For example, viruses in an outbreak will usually be sufficiently closely related in terms of their sequence to enable phylogenetic trees to be produced. These trees will allow precise relationships between various isolates to be inferred. Hence, the geographic and temporal structure of the outbreak can be analysed. Virus taxonomy delivers a structured format for the identification of viruses, for disease diagnosis and for the characterisation of new virus isolates. It provides a data set for the development of antivirals, vaccines and even disease control strategies. Finally, Virus taxonomy builds a platform for the investigation of virus epidemiology, pathogenesis, evolution, and for the study of the structure and function relationships between virus proteins. Now let's take a closer look at two major and important groups of viruses. The positive-stranded and negative-stranded RNA viruses. All viruses with negative-stranded RNA genomes have helical nucleocapsids, and some of them have segmented genomes. As their genome cannot act as messenger RNA, they need to carry an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase already packed into the virion. All viruses of this group which infect vertebrates are enveloped. The size of their genomes is limited and ranges from 9 kilobases to 19 kilobases. Most plant viruses and many viruses that infect vertebrates have positive stranded RNA genomes. All genomes in this group are linear and range from 5 kilobases to 30 kilobases. Most viruses with genomes smaller than 10 kilobases are naked, while the larger ones are enveloped. What is important in this group of viruses is that upon entry into the host cell, their genome can act as messenger RNA and be immediately infectious. 